Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now it's good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate any visitor that might be visiting with us today. We're always glad to see you here at Northside. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be a great inspiration to everyone. Now if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 10. I want to read a verse of scripture found there for our text and I'll be giving you other scripture on through the message. Proverbs chapter 10 is found on page uh, uh, 678 in the original Schofield reference Bible. Now tape today will be tape number 175 and I'm speaking on the subject ways to lengthen your life on the earth. Now this should be interesting to everyone the ways to lengthen your life on this present earth. I'll give you chapter and verse for what I have to say and show you how you can lengthen your life on the earth or how you can shorten your days. And then the message and the, uh, of course, the singing will be on cassette tape number 175. I'm sending these tape out to you that write in and close a gift of $3 for each tape. And the gift is used to help Defray the radio expense. We have many, many cassette tapes. You can write in and get a list because others you might be interested in, and I hope you'll do so. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is a zip code number. Now let me make another announcement here for Brother John Bruce. Brother Bruce uh, helps out here in the musical phase of my work here at Northside. You hear him on the piano and also on the guitar. And some of you have showed concern about Brother Bruce's piano music. In fact, two or three have written in asking about it and wanted a copy of it. Now, if you'd like to have a copy of John Bruce's piano solos, you can write to him. Just, I'll give you the address in a moment, so get your pencil handy. You can write to him and close a gift of $3 to help take care of the tape and the mailing expense and tell him you want a tape of his piano solo numbers. And Brother Bruce will be glad to send you that tape. In addition to that, Brother Bruce is in the uh, musical field, tuning pianos and organs and musical instruments. That's his line of duty, tuning pianos, organs, and Musical instruments, if you're interested in having your piano tuned up, or your organ, why, well, you get in touch with him. He'll do you a good job, and now I'll give you his mailing address. John W. Bruce, that's B-R-U-C-E, 885 Oak Grove Road. That's John W. Bruce, 885 Oak Grove Road, Athens, Georgia, 30607. Now, that's his mailing address. I'll give you his phone number. Of course, every code is 44. The phone number is 543-3989. That's 543-3989 to get in touch with Brother John Bruce. Now, if you have that Bible open at Proverbs chapter 10, let's look at verse 27, which would be on page 679. I want to give you what thus saith the Lord God. Show you how you can lengthen your days on the earth. Now you have a lot of pill peddlers and whatnot and racketeers and charlatans out telling you how you can take a few of uh, their pills or bottle of their medicine and, and live forever. Might have been the pill peddler went to this old man's house, the old lady, and the old man lived there. They were up in age. In fact, the old man is about 85 years old. This man had his pills, and he told him, said, Now, if you take these pills, take them according to direction, it'll lengthen your life and make you young again. And the old man said, Well, he'd like to be young again. He said, All right, you just buy some of these pills, and you take them, and you'll be young again, live longer. So the old man bought a bunch of them. And so the pill peddler was due back in 
some length of time to see how the old man was doing with his medicine and probably had run out to sell him some more. And so he came back to check on the old man early one morning. His wife came to the door and he said, I come to check on your husband to see how the pills are working. Oh, she said, man, they, they're working fine. Said, uh, he's down yonder beside the road now with his books out here waiting for the school bus. He's starting back to school. And so if you get something that'll do you that good, I guess it'd be worthwhile. Don't you think so? Well, I guess it would. All right, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now you can't improve on that. That's God's word. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now that's God speaking there from the scriptures. I didn't write the Bible. God wrote it and God told you there how to prolong your days. And he told you how to shorten your days on the earth. Now I'm going to give you other scriptures and other thoughts along this line on how to uh, strengthen your life or lengthen your life on the earth. Most all of us are interested in the longevity of life, no doubt about that, and medical science and other means have helped us to a certain extent. People living longer now than it did some 50, 75 years ago. Thank God for medical science and certain other factors that produces that. And man's living a little longer. You have a lot of people now over 100 years old in this nation. And by the year 2000, I saw the statistics the other day where there'd be a great number if Jesus tarries his coming, there'll be over 100 years old living on the earth. If things continue on at the pace they're continuing on now in the field of science, medical science, and so forth. But I'd rather go to the Bible and find out from the Word of God how you can live longer. So I want to start with the young people, start with the children, so you can start off right and live a long time on the earth. Now you can lengthen your life by obeying your parents. Now that's simple, isn't it? We're living in a day of disobedience. We're living in a day when young people want to be doing their thing. We're living in a day whenever they feel like when they get in their early teens, they don't need any advice from their parents, anyone else. They can do their own thing. They've sat around and watched TV and hobnobbed around with worldly crowds and participated in worldly programs until they have all the answers. Did you know out here in cemeteries all over America today, you have teenagers buried? And did you know that most of them were disobedient to their parents as to why they're in that cemetery? Had they obeyed their parents if they had the right kind of parents and disobeyed them? Went out and got with the wrong crowd and killed in car wrecks or got on drugs or alcohol, got in fights and things of that type and shortened their days, or contracted some kind of disease, and they died in their teens. A lot of them like that today, and a lot of them in a dying condition right now. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now you may say, Preacher Edwards, that's a way over in the Old Testament. Yes, I know it is, but Paul brought it over in the New Testament. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 in the first three verses, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long on the earth. Now Paul said in the New Testament, quoting from the Old Testament, that if children would obey their parents in the Lord, they could live a long time on the earth. I know of a young boy one night wanted the automobile. His parents said, you can't take the car tonight. You've been out too much now. No, I want it, he said. I want it tonight. They said, no, you can't have the car tonight. And so his parents went to church. He refused to go. While they were gone to church, he went out and there, slipped the car out and came to Athens and got with the wrong crowd, began to drink and... And I got in a drunken condition, started back home, turned over in the middle of the highway and killed himself. I happened to be the first one on the scene along with another preacher after he turned over in the middle of the road. This preacher said to me, said, Brother Edwards, I never did like to see anybody die with his shoes on. Now I'm going to slip his shoes off. I said, take them off. And he took the boy's shoes off, 
But that time others were gathering around, but he died before they got into the hospital. If that young man had obeyed his parents, he'd probably be alive today. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now you young people go out here and disobey your parents, you end up in the cemetery. You're going to find out this preacher is trying to help you. And you need to obey your parents in the Lord. Start out from just a little child, from the time you're big enough to know what it's all about. Until you're up in adult age and if you'll obey your parents and honor them and respect them, even when you become an adult, you still respect and honor your parents. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 10, Hear, O my son, and receive my sins, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now the wisest man, apart from Jesus Christ, never lived on the earth in regard to knowledge, made that statement. He said, Hear me, my son. He said, You receive what I'm telling you, and if you'll do that, your life shall be many. You'll prolong your life upon the earth. Your years shall be many. Solomon said to his sons, You obey me, you listen to me, and you can live longer upon the earth. Many, many young people today going out in the world to be with the crowd. They didn't want to be an oddball, so they decided they'd start a smoking cigarettes and smoking marijuana, sipping beer, and taking a little drink occasionally. And the next thing they knew, they were hooked on dope and hooked on alcohol and hooked on cigarettes and then maybe killed in a car wreck. Many of these teenagers today, they're killed in these automobile accidents. They're under influence of alcohol or dope. Now, had they obeyed their parents and done right, they could still be alive. But instead of that, they were killed in a car wreck, killed somebody else on the highway, all because they were rebellious and they were disobedient and they wouldn't listen to reason. They wouldn't obey their parents. They wouldn't do that which is right. And they went to a premature grave. Back in Old Testament days, this matter was so serious. Unto God said, if your son don't obey, you just bring him out. You just trot him out here and let the men get some stones and stone him to death and go ahead and put him in the cemetery. Now, this is very important that you obey your parents in the Lord. If you don't do it, you're digging your own grave. You're shortening your own days upon the earth. I don't care who you are. You cannot improve on the word of God. That's what God said in this book. And you better believe it. Some of you listen to me right now. That's been in a lot of trouble, no doubt. You're in ill health. You're suffering. And will suffer the rest of your days because you didn't obey your parents and didn't do right as a young person. And you dug your own grave or digging your own grave or shortening your days on the earth. Number two, you can lengthen your life by praying and weeping before God if you feel that your time is drawing nigh. We have one man in the Bible that knew just exactly how long he would live. I'm not talking about those that committed suicide. I'm talking about a man that loved God. He knew how long he would live because when he found himself in ill health and found out he wouldn't be on the earth very much longer, he turned his face toward the wall. He set his house in order. And he began to pray and weep and talk to God. And he prayed and wept and talked to God until God sent a prophet to him and told him, he said, I'm going to extend your life 15 more years upon the earth. That man's name was Hezekiah. You'll find that in Isaiah chapter 38 in the first five verses. And he sought God for longevity of life. He wanted God to lengthen his days. And God extended his days 15 years. Now he knew exactly how long he would live. He knew he would live 15 more years. He knew that. And so he appreciated that. Now there's some of you today, if you're in ill health and you feel like maybe the end is not too far away and you love God and you mean business, if you begin to seek the face of God and shed a few tears about it, God may extend your lifespan upon the earth. God may let you live a long time on the earth, even longer than you would have had you not uh, got in touch with God. If you ring the bell of heaven and let God know you mean business and Really pray and cry to God. God is able to lengthen your days upon the earth. Now you need to realize that. I was talking to a man some time ago. He's buried now. He died a few months ago with cancer. The old man is about 80 some odd years old. I tried to win him to God a few years ago. Couldn't do anything with him. Other preachers tried to win him to God but to no avail. I saw him in the hospital before he died. And he said to me, he said, if God will let me live, I'll serve him. Now, you can't, uh, you can't bribe God. You can't bargain with God like that. 
That's the old man who had already had a cancer in his body. Now he wants to tell God if he'll let him live, he'll serve him. Now had he been serving God all those past years, he might have talked to God about that matter and got something done. But him being a lost sinner and want to promise God, if God let him live, that he'd serve him, God's not going to pay any attention to that kind of stuff. But if you're a child of God and mean business, and you feel like you're coming toward the end, just tell the Lord about it. He's able to lengthen your days. And God will lengthen people's days according to the Bible. If they mean business, if they're sincere, and want it done to the glory of God. And so cry to God, pray to God, shed a few tears, spend time in prayer, do some fasting, and God can extend your days. We come to number three. You can prolong your life by not being over much wicked. Over much wicked. There's people today being killed. There's gangsters and robbers and thieves and people dying today, alcoholics or drunkards as the Bible calls them and so forth. They're shortening their days. These gangsters, uh, these mobsters, these uh, dope addicts, dope peddlers, they're knocking each other off, they're killing each other out. These drunkards are killing themselves. People, uh, they're contracting lung cancer because of, of over much smoking and dope and things of that type and whiskey drinking and being over much wicked. You can shorten your days. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17, be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? God said, why do you be so wicked, over much wicked, and die before your time? The graves filled with people today that were wicked and shortened their days upon the earth. They go out, they get in a fight, they stab each other, they shoot each other, they get drunk, they rip up and down the highways, they get killed, they're shortening their days. Not too many years ago, I have a close relative he's he was about a year older than I was and we grew up together went to school together he was my dad's youngest brother I loved him very much and we were just like brothers as we went to school as I grew up but he became over much weakened from the time that he came out of the Navy he never saw a sober day until he died and he was a chain smoker he would light one cigarette from another I stood down here in the parsonage yard a year seven years ago he was about 40 years old at that time. I looked him in the face. He is a handsome, curly-headed, black curly-headed boy, broad shoulders, about six foot two, fine, handsome young man, beautiful, big blue eyes. I looked him in the face and I called him by his name. I said, if you don't do something about it, you're not going to be here long. I said, you're not going to see many more birthdays, my friend. I beg you to do something about it. He, he was very hard-headed and stubborn, and, and he, uh, he wouldn't uh, listen to me. A few months later, I preached his funeral. He died with a cancer. He smoked too many cigarettes. He drank too much liquor. He lived too much of a rowdyous life, and a cancer took him out of this world. He took seriously ill in Baltimore, Maryland. We drove all the way up there to see if I could help him, but he was in such state, I'm afraid I couldn't get to him. And he died, and I preached his funeral. His brother also did likewise. God cut him off because of disobedience at the age of 46. This was the age of 44. And I have very close relatives right now. I have a very close relative right now on the same track, hard-headed, stubborn, drank liquor, sucked cigarettes, doctors warned him, and his days are numbered. In a matter of time, he'll go the same route this other one went that I told you about in a matter of time. And if you don't get saved, he'll end up in, in the blazes of hell like some of the others. That's terrible. That's all. It breaks my heart. I pray for him every day. But some are hard-headed and stubborn. They're going on and kill themselves and say, Well, something's got to take me out of the world. I've got to die by some means. I might as well go ahead and smoke and drink and gamble and cuss and carry on. But they don't realize they're going to die a whole lot sooner and end up in a terrible place of hell where they be tormented forever and forever. Shortening their days up on the earth. I could stand here and spend the rest of my time and call people by name at my age who went to school with me that took the wrong route and went the way of the world, the Satan and the devil, you know where they are now? In the graveyard and many of them in hell, screaming in the flames of terrible hell. The Bible says, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? I don't want to die before my time. I want to stay here as long as I can 
to get the gospel out. Number four, you can lengthen your life by being honest. You know, a lot of crooked people die before their times. You know that? You have a lot of people so crooked, you can throw them in a barrel of fish hooks and they'd wiggle out and never get stuck by the first one. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 15, But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shall I have, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God shall give thee. Now we need some honesty today. I'm telling you what's the truth. It's got the place even in every profession today, the business world. It beats anything I've ever seen. People tell you a lie. They'll tell you they'll see you tomorrow. They'll pay you tomorrow. They want you to do a job tomorrow. They want you to do this and tell you a bold-faced lie. Several years ago, we built a house out here behind the church. I dealt with about 19 or 20 different people in building that house. I think maybe I could get one out of the 19, I believe it was 19 different people that told me the truth. All the rest of them looked me in the face and lied to me and told me they'd do certain things. I'll be there tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do this and tell me a bald-faced liar. I didn't know people were so dishonest. Out in the business world, people tell you they'll do things. You can go to a store a lot of times and to buy something. They'll say, uh, we don't have it today. We've got it ordered and it'll be here tomorrow. You come back uh, in two days and we'll have it. Tell you a bald face. I hadn't even got it ordered. They'll tell you those things to get you to come back. And, and people lie to you. They'll climb a tree and tell you a lie before they stand on the ground and tell you the truth. I, I detest dishonesty. I want to be a man of my word. If I tell you something, brother, I'll do it a bust. That's right. I'll do it. I'll let it rip, brother. I'm telling you right now. If I tell you something, I'm going to do what I tell you. If I promise you something, I'll do what I promise you. I mean that. I'm that kind of a, a person. And my parents taught me to be that kind of person. But you live living today in a bunch of crooks in every profession in the business world. And in every profession today, they'll tell you a bold-faced liar. And then laugh about it when you walk away. They're not going to live out their days. We need, need some honesty. A lot of those people are going to die before their time. We need some honesty. Be honest. Be honest in business. Be honest in serving God. If you're in business, if you tell a man you're going to do something, you do it. If you promise a man something, you do it. If you see you can't do it, you tell a man, go to him and be honest. Be honest with that. Let your word be your bond. A lot of businessmen today won't be in business much longer because they're too crooked to tell too many lies. You can't depend on them. It tries to be a bunch of crooks and they go bankrupt, sink a lot of people and they're gone. You be honest in your business. You tell the people the truth and do what you tell them and you'll find that God will bless you and your business. Then number five, you can lengthen your life by hating covetousness. In Proverbs chapter 28 verse 16, he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. You have a lot of people out here, they're going to keep up with the Joneses. They see what the Joneses got, they got to get the same thing. If they only knew how much the Joneses owed, then they wouldn't want to keep up with them. But they don't know how much they owe them. They'll say, well, the Joneses, they got them a new car. We're going to get us one. The Joneses, they bought them a boat. We're going to buy us one. The Joneses built them a new house. We're going to buy us one. The Joneses, they bought them some new clothes. We're going to uh, buy us some. The Joneses bought themselves some nice jewelry. We're going to buy us some. We're going to keep up with the Joneses. And that's covetousness. And the Bible says if you overtake with covetousness, you're going to extend yourself above you're able to take care of. And you go get yourself in a situation where you'll die before your time. Don't you worry about the Joneses. Beloved, you worry about yourself. And be honest, live your own life. If the Joneses want to go out and run themselves in debt and go bankrupt, that's them. Don't you worry about it. You live your own, don't, don't live above your income. Don't do that. Be sure you're able to live in comparison with your income because if you don't you do it, you're in trouble. And you're going to grieve about it. And the first thing you know, you shorten your days up on the earth. And this thing you call covetousness is a dangerous sin. And not only in that field, but many fields, we could apply that, that shorten the days of people. A lot of these dope addicts, I'm going to get rich right quick. I know so-and-so sold some cocaine and they became a millionaire all of a sudden. You didn't see down the road, John, where somebody's going to kill you when you start fooling with that dope and put you in the graveyard. You won't see down the road where you'll be in the penitentiary serving time. Beloved, you won't see that. You're covetous. You want to get rich right quick. And you're going into the dope business or the car stealing business or the liquor business. And you're shortening your days up on the earth. You better be careful and be honest.
Be honest. And then uh, uh, number six, you can lengthen your life by obeying God's word. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 40, Thou shalt keep them, uh, thou shalt keep therefore his statutes, his commandments, which I commend thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now if you want to live a long time, obey the word of God. The Bible says obey this book. Would you like to live to be a hundred? Obey the book. You might do it. I'm not saying you would, but you might. But you go out here and move contrary to this book, you won't live to be in a hundred years old. Now the Bible says, obey the word of God. Now I must hear number seven. You may lengthen your day by having a merry heart. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. You have too many people today that walk around grieved, worried about something. I just know it's going to happen. I don't see how in the world are we going to do it. I'm just grieved to death. Day in and day out, they're just grieved. You know what they're doing? They're developing uh, cancer on the inside of them, a high blood pressure, a weakening their heart. And before too long, they won't be grieving because they'll be in the cemetery. Now you go around and worry yourself to death and grieve and cross the river before you get to the bridge. You just know the river's up and the bridge won't be there. And you cross that river half a dozen times before you get there and grieve about it. And the things you worry about, most of them are not going to come to pass anyway. So why worry about it? Don't worry about yesterday. You can't do anything about that. You're not living tomorrow. So just go on today. As your day is, so should your strength be. And the Bible says, be content with such things you have. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Be content. Quit worrying about everything. You've heard the uh, uh, saying, the contented cow gives good milk. That cow's contented out there eating that green grass. You can get some good old milk out of that cow. And she's contented. Well, why aren't you contented? Be contented. Be content with such things you have. Your health's better. You keep the blood pressure down. You keep your heart stronger. You keep the cancers out of your body. And you'll just absolutely be in much better health if you'll quit your worrying and grieving and tormenting and fussing and fuming. And don't worry, just start singing the songs of Zion and praising God and sing so loud you run the cats and dogs out of the house. Just sing loud enough a dog down in the fence to join in with you and he'll start howling. We used to have a bird dog every time an ambulance or police car go by and that siren take he'll turn his on. And he could sound just like them as they went by. Now just start singing and let the dog start singing with you down the dog fence. Let the cat start meowing and just go ahead and enjoy things. A lot of people go in the house, they're half mad, they grab the cat up and throw it out the window. Now you listen to me. You quit worrying yourself to death. Be careful about that temper. Try to stay in a good attitude and a good mood. Enjoy life. Praise God. Serve the Lord. Have a merry heart. And that merry heart will do you more good than all the medicine out here in the drugstore. Now you go to the doctor's office today and, and see those, those women sitting there, sitting there just worried to death. Some all draw over, just know they're not going to make it. They just know they're going to have cancer. They just, they just know they're not going to live long. And the doctor stick them in the stall and he knows how to how he'll go by and say, Lady, you're looking good. You're looking better. Just keep on now the same medicine you've been taking. Come back in two weeks and pay the bill as you go out the door out here. Be back in two weeks and... And there they're back, you know, and it's about dead and, and sitting there just grieving. Everybody looked like their mind lord moved in on top of them, going to stay there about a, a six months, and they just grieved to death. And the reason they're there, they grieve themselves there. You quit worried about these things. Stay jolly, stay happy, praise the Lord, shout the victory, sing, and move on for God. Amen. That's good medicine. I'm giving you some good medicine. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Who said that? God said it. I believe it. It'll do you good. It's better than any medicine you can ever take. Then finally, you can lengthen your days by abiding in the will of God. You may say, preach Edwards, how may I know the will of God? I'll give you the scripture. Let you read it for yourself and tell you exactly how you can know the will of God for your life. You read Romans chapter 12 and the first two verses will tell you how to know when you're in the will, the perfect will of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Thank you kindly. You've listened well today. Take the medicine. It'll do you good. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll take the word of God and use it. 
We all want to live longer. We don't want to be in ill health. And you tell us in your wonderful word how we can live a long time on the earth. You tell us how we can be in better health. You tell us in your word, dear Father, how we can prosper financially. And our God, you tell us many things in the word we need to know. But a lot of people won't listen. They won't believe it. They won't accept it. Help thy people accept these things today. From the word of God, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While Debbie plays for us, if there's somebody in this building today that needs to come to this altar for salvation, for rededication, for church membership, I want you to come right now while Debbie plays. Would you come? Obey him. Obey the Lord. How about it? <laughs> 